Uh, Mr. Sablon. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Secretary. Welcome and Good to thank see you again. very much for your service to our country. Um, um, it was people like Senator Akaka, uh, Mr. Miller, and your predecessor, Ms. Solis, who uh, pushed and enacted Public Law 110, that's 229, which extended the federalized immigration to the Northern Mariana Islands. And uh, the law established a five-year transition period during which foreign workers were to be replaced by U.S. workers. Um, this transition period ends this December. Uh, but the law foresaw the possibility that five years might not be enough time. Uh, so the Secretary of Labor, so you were given the authority to extend the transition period if, and I quote, necessary to ensure an adequate number of workers will be available for legitimate businesses, end of quote. And the Secretary was required to make a decision one way or the other, Mr. Secretary, within 180 days of the uh, end of the transition period. So I asked, we asked the question, what kind of progress have we made in the Northern Marianas over the past four years? When the period, transition periods began in 2009, there were over 17,245 foreign workers, uh, according to the GAO. As of October of 2013, uh, the Department of Homeland Security said there were 9,617. So I think that is significant progress in getting to um, entirely U.S. workers. But I also think it is clear that getting to zero by the end of this year is not possible, uh, which is, that is why I wrote to your predecessor in this February of 2013, uh, almost 14 months ago actually, uh, asking for a decision to extend the period, the extension period. And I asked for that decision to be made sooner rather than later. Because leaving the decision to the last minute leaves businesses uncertain whether they would have an adequate number of workers. Le make a leaving the decision to the end of the transition period also have a less number of, say, consumers mm -hmm. in the Northern Marianas. Um, and so if the businesses don't, don't invest, invest, they don't create jobs, and that plays hell on an economy trying to pull itself out of a deep recession. That's the economic argument. Now, there's the humanitarian concern as well, because waiting until the last minute leaves 9,617 foreign workers hanging in the breeze. Many of these people have lived in the Northern Marianas for decades. They have families and homes there. If they have to be gone by the end of this year, we owe them the courtesy, Mr. Secretary, of letting them know as soon as possible. They need to start looking for work elsewhere, selling their belongings, and moving their families, their kids. But for 14 months, your department has been unable or unwilling, sir, to make a decision. Now, Mr. Secretary, I know that the Northern Marianas does not have an admirable history that when it comes to foreign workers. Mr. Miller will tell you that himself. But it is possible that your department does not trust the Northern Marianas will replace foreign workers with U.S. workers, that we're just buying time. But I remind you, sir, of the annual number of foreign workers permitted is not a decision of the Northern Marianas government. The Department of Homeland Security sets that number and the, and the law requires fewer and fewer each year. For this, homeland, for this year, Homeland Security set the number at 14,000. That's a long way from zero. I also want to remind you, sir, that my office has reached out to your department to ask that you provide technical assistance to the Northern Marianas and advice on how to train up U.S. workers. We really want your help. We want to complete the transition that Public Law 110-229 requires. But we need to do it in a way that keeps our economy whole and does not put the jobs of U.S. workers in that economy at risk. And that uncertainty in the absence of your decision, sir, is not helping. So I hope you would take my, my words to heart, Mr. Secretary. I'm not asking you a question, sir. I'm just making a statement, hoping that you'd hear us mm -hmm. out and, and make the decision soon. Having said that, Mr. Chairman, I also I fully support uh, increasing the federal minimum wage to $10.10. And I know that may sound strange coming from someone who asked for a delay in the minimum wage in my district. <laughs> I did so because, in my view, the rate increase in the Northern Mariana since 2008 needed to be tempered. But I have never wavered in my commitment to see workers in the Northern Marianas receive the full minimum wage. And I know they will be glad to see it increase to $10.10 an hour. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's my statement. Thank you. I thank the gentleman, uh, Dr. Bouchon. Thank you very much. Why, thank, sir. thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, um, my dad was a coal miner, and uh, I, I was a physician, and that will lead into some of the questions that I have regarding. Uh, I'm concerned about the scientific basis upon which uh, MSHA's proposed respirable dust rule is predicated on and the availability of technology to reduce dust concentrations to levels contained in the proposal. 
GAO is currently conducting analysis of this rule to include a review of the technological and other options available for lowering the level, lowering the level of dust in coal mines and the cost, advantages and disadvantages of these technologies. Uh, do you think you would be willing to take into consideration all the relevant information and conclusions for the pending GAO study uh, before finalizing that rule? Uh,